Hey, good morning, folks. This is AJ, the CEO. I'm here back at Good Shepherd trying to troubleshoot what is going on with an ATEM Television Studio HD. Hey folks, this is your first time stopping by the channel. Thanks for stopping by and on this channel. We focus on tips, training, strategies, reviews, and bills to help modernize your media ministry. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. So Good Shepherd is one of the, um, at the time, one of the biggest projects that we did here um, where I installed an entire video system, an entire network. So they're using a host of Black Magic products here, as well as the ATEM Television Studio um, HD. Now, one of the problems is that no sound was being picked up on their live stream. So there's no sound that's going into the ATEM from the XLRs. So what I did today is I brought my portable system here and I'm just gonna test and try and find out what the issue is. All right, so here I have my Rode video mic and it has an XLR connection, the official Rode <laughs> XLR converter for this mic. And I have my portable ATEM system right here. And I'll link a description, um, a link to the video of me building this, but this is my whole portable system that I take with me when I'm doing type of events and stuff like that. But on the back, let me unplug this headphone. So on the back, I've extended the XLR inputs here. So what we're gonna do is just hook this, instead of me having to go up and down the stairs down here to get a mic, I'm just plugging in my mic here to simulate the same thing. Two channels, but we're only gonna use one channel. All right, so we have our mic plugged in. Let me undo these cables here. All right, I have it going into the network. Okay, fire truck going by. All right, so I'm here on the computer. Let me connect to that ATEM. And I know it's the right one because it'll say PlayStation, which is mine right there. So what we want to do is just look for sound here. So let's go ahead and turn this mic on. All right. As you could probably saw, you saw some feedback here. So if I just, all right, you see it's picking up audio. So we know the audio, the XLR input here is working. So now I'm gonna hook up the mic to this ATEM and test the exact same thing. So let's turn this mic off so we see the pop. Now let's connect over to this one. And you can tell that's the second one. Let's go ahead and unplug this. Now there are two channels here that we can plug this into. And I'm going to plug into channel number one. Alright, we're plugged in. So now we're just going to turn this on. Do we get anything? All right, we're on. But we are getting nothing. So, I just saved myself some time. This seems like it's something actually to matter with the ATEM itself. So, what I'm going to do is disassemble mine and replace this one. So at least they're up, and then I'm gonna have to um, take this one and work on it later to see what it is. So this was kind of a short video, but it looks like the XLRs are completely not working for some odd reason. Yeah, getting nothing. Now, I do get audio if I turned on the audio in any of one of these. Um, the audio does come through, but for some reason, just the XLR audio is not coming in. So let me replace this stuff and switch them out and set up everything here again to make sure everything is working. And then we're going to take this home and then try and diagnose it, diagnose what the problem is. All right. I got the, my ATEM put in place. Now I just got to hook everything back up in this mess of cables here <laughs> and just make sure everything is working exactly the way it is. Um, probably need to change the IP address 
which is fine. Mine was at 200. I forgot what the other one was, but either way, get that stuff set up and I just need to make it look completely transparent as if nothing ever changed. So let's finish getting all this stuff configured. All right, after a whole lot of contortion ability to get up under there and get everything hooked up, we got everything back in place. Now we just got to simply test the sound to make sure it's working. Um, and I don't have a mic up here, but again, the easiest way to do it is just to unplug and then plug it back in to make sure we're getting at least a reading. That's one easy way to test it, that is. Make sure that's off. Now we're getting audio here. Let's boost the levels on here. And let's save that as well as save as. We're going to do that as today. All right. So let me reach around here and unplug. One of these. Now, I actually have extensions on mine, so this should make it easier to reach and unplug. All right, we got our mic on here. Let me boost the signal some more. And as you can see, test, test, one, two, three. That's pretty low, so but we're getting something. So they should be good now. Now, let me pack everything up. Look over here again on OBS. As you can see, we're getting a signal. So that's good. So let me hook everything back up with the sound, plug it back up, clean my mess up, and then I need to move this other ATEM over here and when I get home, I'm going to crack the, Actually, when I go to church, because I'm going to stay at my church since I got choir verse today, I'm going to crack this open and see if I can find out what's going on with it. All right, I'm back over here at my church now. Um, I have more time to try and figure out what's going on with this a -tim. So we're going to crack this whole thing open, see what's going on, and I'm going to have a flashback to my um, Marine Corps communication technician skills to see if I can diagnose what's going on with this motherboard or whatever the components are causing the audio to not work. It might be something as simple as changing out capacitors or something like that. Why do they have every door locked? <laughs> Sorry, they got oh, they got the door <laughs> taped off because <laughs> they already vacuumed and stuff like that. So anyway, let me bring my stuff inside of here and get the camera in focus. And I'm not excited about carrying all this stuff upstairs, but oh well. Now that I have some more time, we're going to crack this open and try and find out what in the world is going on with it and why the audio is not working. Alright, so get our screen here. So this is the problem. So I'm gonna open this up. Let's see if there's any damage in here, something obvious that we can try and fix. So here's the insides of this. We upgraded the fans here to something more powerful and quieter. That would not be the cause. 
but we're just trying to find out why no sound is coming through here. So nothing is really jumping out. Not like anything is loose. Don't see any electrical damage in any way, shape or form. I wish I had a multimeter on me so I could at least run some connections here and see what's going on. But this is the whole area of what's being worked on, but not entirely sure. So let me hook some power up to this and then let's just see what it does. And I got some extra cables. I'm gonna run this into our Behringer, audio out from our Behringer here and into here and see if we get any type of sound or anything like that. All right, so right now I'm playing some music on the computer over there and it's going into the Behringer and plug my headphones in there's sound coming out of it hopefully y'all can hear that so I know sound is coming in <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do now is plug this quarter inch to XLR so we know we're getting sound and this is gonna go into the channel on the eight tip. So we should be getting something. But as you can see, we aren't getting anything. Nothing at all. Now I'm going to plug my headphones into the ATEM and see if I'm getting anything that way as well. Here on the front there. And I'm getting nothing from there either. So let's try the other channel here. Still nothing, but let's just confirm there's still music coming out of here, and sound is coming out, so looks like it's actually something physically the matter with that part of the board. So just trying to think of what would be a viable solution for this because now granted I could still use this because I don't really use that much of the XLR in my type of setup but inherently it's broken so I'm gonna try and crack this open see if I see anything else in here that's off of the eye but as of right now the whole audio part of XLR is dead so we have to figure out another way around that audio portion the XLR inputs for the ATEM Good Shepherd's ATEM is shot um, what I'm doing right now is looking to downgrade it to do a faux reset and then try it again just to see if maybe an update may solve the issue kind of reset it because I didn't see any physical damage to any of the components so um, maybe the quote-unquote factory reset may help I don't know um, but again I just sent the repair which is pretty much just the cost of a brand new one there um, to Good Shepherd and we shall see they've been great clients um, so I think that shouldn't really be an issue so the other stuff I have working on today is my barbers your um, domain has finally transferred over so I'm gonna do some more work on getting his website up to date I have all my other supplies here so I'm probably gonna run a cable in the multi-purpose room for the NDI monitor to go over there so that people in the multi-purpose room can see in high definition compared to the SD and probably gonna do a little more practicing with uh, music I have I'm gonna be at the I got an appointment at the VA hospital tomorrow which I'm probably gonna be there all day so really won't I don't think I'm gonna be having much to do tomorrow 
um, so it may not be a, a vlog for that one. And then Saturday, I got a bunch of games that I have to record. Um, and then Sunday is church. Oh, and also I got some, it looks like I got some announcements that came in that I have to make. Um, looks like I just got to do some modifications to them, but that's about it. So let me clean up my mess up here. Keep trying to play around with downgrading the ATEM. See if that fixes anything. If not, pack up everything and then put everything in the car and do something else around here. <laughs> Oh yeah, I knew the other thing I was going to do. I was going to take out the <sighs> GTX 1050 from here, the system that we put the Ryzen 3200G in to see if we could run everything just off of that GPU instead of that. And that would free up the graphics card for our streaming system. So we could put the other one in the other system, the FX 8320 that we we're going to put over to the chapel. So I'll be testing that too. All right, so my plan didn't work. <laughs> it didn't work with that. So what I'm gonna do is ultimately so I still need a graphics card I put the 3200 G in our live streaming system installing the software I'm gonna put the Ryzen 3 1200 back in here, but overclock it and use the um, 1050 uh, Graphics card still in there to handle everything. I don't know it just it was working and then it just died and then all the screens went blank and it just stopped working and honestly, I didn't have time to try and diagnose what's going on. The idea is to get everything back up and running before choir rehearsal without any issues. So this is just one of those problems that doesn't need to be solved. Might as well just took the Ryzen 5 out of this, put that in the video editing system, put the Ryzen 3 3200G that I know works fine for this purpose. And instead of trying to save myself with the chip, just keep this system exactly the way it was, but with the AIO, so it's enough space for additional memory. <sighs> All right, so I don't know what's going on, but the Nook right now is performing very, very, very slowly, as if it's like just dragging behind. I don't know if an update or something happened, but it's hitting like 100% um, CPU utilization which it wasn't doing that before so I'm not a hundred percent sure so the thought of using this as an NDI uh, pretty much got <laughs> the idea tanked but what I am thinking about is the A300 uh, that Nook which came with the processor was around $150 still had to buy a hard drive still had to buy memory um, now with the a the a300 that's 150 still need memory um, technically I could take the memory out of that I believe that's DDR4 if it is I can take the memory out of that and use that but if not have to get memory need to get a CPU and we need to get a hard drive but we salvaged a hard drive as well as there's a hard drive inside this Intel nook so we could take that out so technically it's 150 say we went with uh, a 200 GE or 200 G um, AMD the same one that I put in my mom's that's around like 150 but honestly I can if I can get a 2200 G that's going for $74 so 75 so we're at 250 no 225 dollars with just the a300 the 2200g we already have a hard drive so we don't have to worry about that and then memory is about another 50 dollars so for 300 dollars we could get something to work now i'll be honest the tech part of me wants to do that but for an additional $200 for a total of 500 we can go back to the original plan of replacing the um, RF modulator and use it with a um, HD like a it's a new modulator that pushes HD like it's a digital antenna for that amount and then that will run to every TV so none of this would be needed it would still push that same signal over the coax so that's what I'm debating um, I already packed up the ATEM, put it back in my case. Technically, it still works for me, 
um, I just can't use the audio in, so that would mean that the Rode mic, I would have to plug directly into my camera like I used to, and then the audio is being fed over SDI, um, and that would work. The only other thing I'm sitting back think is I would need to get this, the same type of um, analog to SDI converter that I did at Liberty Baptist Church and push all the audio into that. I can still use my um, Behringer four channel, five channel mixer, but I will push the audio into that converter. Then that converter would embed it into SDI and then SDI, I would have to run SDI into one of the open jacks on my connection. That seems a little bit over the top, but it is doable. Um, but for right now, I don't have any need for that. I can just push all the audio over that, the camera, and everything else is gonna be capturing audio from HDMI or SDI, so that's good. So that's one thing I don't necessarily have to buy. But it does free up the funding for the A10 Mini that I could always get. So anyway, that's what we're gonna decide. Um, since I'm not gonna be installing the NDI over at the other side of the church, I don't need to do that. So what I'm gonna do is pack up everything that I got. I still freed up the um, 750 that was in our live streaming system, but since that's running the 3200G now, I don't don't need this. So this is gonna be freed up and gonna be used with the FX um, 8320 for the live streaming system that I'm gonna to put together over in the chapel. The only thing I need is a case and a power supply and it looks like they threw away all the old computers um, so I don't think I could have been able to use that maybe um, I know I would have had to need a new power supply but anyway uh, I hope y'all like the adventures today uh, kind of anticlimactic since wasn't able to really fix anything but at least you got a chance to see what's inside the um, a10 Television Studio HD but anyway, thank you all for all your new subscribers. Really appreciate it. So if you like this content, appreciate a like, consider subscribing, and hit that bell. That way you get notified when we come out with other videos to help modernize your media ministry and another day in the life of a media ministry volunteer. So we will see y'all tomorrow, folks. And I got choir rehearsal tonight. So yeah, I'm excited about that. Anyway, later, folks.